Hello, this is how to front it part one, and today I will discover or uncover flex versus grid, breaking down an UI, how to be better at front end development, and some design rules, finding out taste and sources where you can look for. So first of all, let's uh, go with the flex versus grid. So our flex is two directional, and our grid it. the uh, grid is three directional so like this is y this is x and this is z so uh, what what do i mean by flex and grid i think you probably be knowing how flex and grid works i won't go much with the code because it's the destructuring part it's the thinking not the actual code so by default every html element is something like this represented uh, whenever you add an element it added one after another something like this when we say put it in a grid then we simply make it something like this one after another in a row you can say flex column and then it will become column again but by default flex will make your elements one after another now if i want to say make it a grid then what i can do is i will duplicate this and i will add them behind uh, these ones all right so for the grid we says how many rows and how many columns we have so i said i will have three columns and three rows and the first uh, template will take space of two columns the second row template will take uh, two columns and the third row will have only one column with the full row size all right so if you want to make an ui something like this we will go with grid and if you want to follow a normal deconstructing an ui we will go with the flex flex is one of the thing which i use 99% of the time i mostly think in terms of flex grid is uh, i think in terms of either i whenever i want to make a bento grid or whenever i want to make a something some ui like pinterest or some ui where a lot of cards are there then i specifically prefer grid over a flex there because it's easy and rest of the time it just flex box making dips and dips and dips i don't try to make it optimized i solely focus on making ui functional first and then you add on and you optimize it or remove the number of dips or the nesting all right so this is a uh, flex versus grid now i will break down an ui so you can understand how i break down whenever i start working how i actually think in terms of flex so whenever i see some ui like this i remove the f sections and i start to break down it into a different rectangles because flex is just rectangles are placed uh, in a manner manner so i will uh, take this rectangle make it red so now the first rectangle i will make is the whole ui it's a big rectangle the hero section is a rectangle for me now the another rectangle is this nav bar the another rectangle is this content and another rectangle is this marquee or the logos all right now i will destructure these uis as well so what i will say what i will see here okay so we got two elements here and two elements here so i will group them accordingly so i will group these ones let me group them so this is our group 1 this is our group 2 this is our group 3 now what i will see that okay these two are closed if i just give justify between and space around then i will have this space as well and this stuff so uh, what i will make is this is the bigger rectangle which have two elements the logo and the nav item and then these are two different buttons which is under a div and it have two different button element as well so this is one d structuring now i will come to here i will make this section a bun rectangle and i will say again flex make it flex so side by side so there goes our image and our content now i will destructure this as well so i will say okay this is another section and this is another element this one we will do by a absolute so you won't conclude this also this one is also one single row and uh, this one is image and background is just a plain gradient or and background image so this is how i destructure an ui if there are cards then i whatever i will do is i will just leave that section suppose we are having multiple cards here or bento grid here then i will leave that section suppose we got something like this all right if if i got something like this i will leave this or uh, think in terms of grid here and i will uh, focus on making another thing rectangle in my head and uh, somehow they will end up like this so i i got one rectangle content here image here and then grid here so this is how i think now let's move on to our next topic
नेक्स्ट इज हाउ टू बी बेटर एट फ्रंट एंड सो बींग बेटर एट फ्रंट एंड इफ यू रियली वॉन्ट टू गो थ्रू सम रिसोर्स देन आई वुड हाईली सजेस्ट यू टू गो टू माई पोर्टफोलियो गो टू द ब्लॉग्स एंड लोड मोर पोस्ट एंड गो टू दिस बेटर फ्रंट एंड पार्ट वन एर आई हैव टोल्ड यू वॉट की एलिमेंट्स यू शुड बी फोकसिंग ऑन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल ऑल्सो ब्रेक डाउन सो यू डोंट एक्चुअली नीड टू रीड इट द फर्स्ट वन इज वेन एवर यू आर बिल्डिंग समथिंग यू नीड टू थिंक वॉट योर इंटरफेस विल हैव सपोज यू आर बिल्डिंग अ फ्लाइट टिकट बुकिंग एप देन यू नो देर विल बी अ लोकेशन अ फील्ड फॉर रिटर्न डेट अ फील्ड फॉर परफॉर्मेंस सर्च अ फील्ड फॉर डिपार्चर सिटी अ फील्ड फॉर डेस्टिनेशन अ फील्ड फॉर रिटर्न डेट यू नो स्टफ लाइक दैट सो यू विल डिफाइन योर फील्ड एंड देन यू विल स्टार्ट इम्प्रूविंग ऑन देन इम incrementally okay you don't uh, you just buyer frame things first so the first step will be buyer framing and needs uh, make it white okay so the first thing will be buyer framing buyer framing is nothing it's just a skeleton of things what you exactly want to have so just a skeleton it's like things you want to have all right so i will just say skeleton then uh next you will go to by framing is okay the next thing you will go with the uh <coughs> improving the domain adding animation no no hierarchy yeah the next uh, the next thing we will go on hierarchy hierarchy i guess spelling is wrong yeah, i spelled is wrong hierarchy and then third we will go on spacing spacing contains of padding margins and elements after spacing this is your wire framing framing is done after spacing we will think what kind of color or we can go with what kind of typography we will go with i usually go with typography here so i will say typography typography essential is just font selection based on theme so i would recommend you to go through some tutorial where they will tell you what kind of font you have to use when working on certain things uh, like serif sans serif mono or roboto or you know stuff like that and then we will create our gray scale design using that and then finally we will add colors right these are the basic principles after the colors we won't uh, really try to do design too much also whenever you are building something suppose you are building a portfolio portfolio is one of the such example where most people sucks so whenever you are building a portfolio you need to think in terms of who will exactly visit the portfolio so who will visit so for usual case it's usually an hr it's usually an founder right it's usually someone uh, some client or you know freelance client usually they are in a rush to figure out information so what usually advised is i am saying usually a lot okay so what usually advised is that you should focus on uh, lower text delivering more and through through the visuals so uh, for example you go to my website and you say what i exactly do you will see all of the meaningful information that you need so there will be my name what i do what i exactly use to build things you know typescript react nextjs one postgres and you have direct contact to connect with me you can get in touch you can read my resume or you can go through my socials this is one of the creative plug but if you really on this screen you can also see my experience below there So if you scroll down, you can see one of my experience which I am currently working on. You can see the technologies I am using. You can see what exactly I worked on. And then you can see rest of my experience as well, and now button to see all of my experience. If I expand the detail, you can see more of it. Because I don't really want to force you to read things. I just want to keep things minimal so you will scroll. Now we will go to projects. So if you are an HR or if you are a founder, you will come to see you. You want to hire a you know designer or a developer you will come you will say okay this guy is ram he is a full stack developer he used this stack all right he got some experience he got all right he got you know five experience and now he will come back he say okay couple of projects he will click on projects he say okay damn he got 12 projects he will go through all of them if he click on this there will be a video load, loading auto playing so you can see also there is a website so there is always necessary and then there is a about me section so after i have convinced a user or a founder or an hr that i know i skill now you should know more about me so you should scroll now if you are scrolling down you will see what exactly i built what kind of i do i should be improving this text here but yeah 
then there is a creative proof of work of mine that okay i am already currently coding cursor for one hour and 36 minutes i have made almost 2300 contributions and this is my github graph there is also a blog section i kept it uh, small because hrs or you know founders don't tend to read them and then you have um, some way to connect with me all right so you have got a cal.com link so you can connect with me directly you got my setup you got uh, some things that drive me so it's like if pain doesn't kill me it only makes me stronger it's uh, different for everyone and uh, then the footer so if you go through this and then you know you can also connect with me so you need to think in terms of that that if somebody is visiting your website you should know what kind of audience you are targeting so if suppose you are targeting a uh, a web3 landing page then you will showcase all of your coins and stuff you will show what kind of value you will get so this is uh, how you exactly think in terms of you know what kind of ui you need to build for a specific user suppose you are building an ui for an extension then you will promote what your extension does you will give user kind of a demo on your blending page so that user can play around and exactly see what your demo does so these are the things you have to keep in mind when you are developing now let's come to the final bit which is finding your taste so finding your taste i would suggest some websites like dribble then uh, mobin all right mobin is another such website where you can see some design inspiration another one is pinterest pinterest you can just go to my profile and uh, you need to click uh, on web ui and you can go through some of the ui designs so <laughs> Right, then uh, I will probably say nah, the next one is Behance. So you have got four sources for yourself: Dribble, Mobin, Pinterest, and Behance. Now, what do you exactly have to do? You just need to go through these, you know, uh, websites, and you need to figure out what you exactly have to build. Suppose you want to build a card, or Mm, suppose you want to build a card all right so i've got one you know such example here you have got another example here 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 and you will open all of the these and you will see what is the common pattern here so i can see one common pattern is usually a glow and a border and a roundness of corner so you can see glow border and roundness of cor corner you can see glow border and roundness of corner you can see it is everywhere so i will keep this thing in my card as well and then i will look for what exactly kind of card i want to build i want to make a rectangle square or you know this kind of rectangle stuff like that so you will think in terms of that and then when you finally figure out that what kind of card will go suppose this card theme will go with my this website so i will go to this website of mine which is uh, star wars Right. So I will go to this website and you can see uh, the theme of here and here is matching. So I will instead of having these kind of card, I will put some some card like this. This is how you actually source your imagination. You will not just copy paste it. You will probably figure out like you are liking this card, this animated card. What you will do is you will take this card and you will pick your this theme and make this card for yourself. This is called stealing. It's a really there is a really good book called Steal Like an Artist. It's on my bench as well. Let me show it to you. Right. So this is the book Steal Like an Artist. You should read this book and you will get to know how to steal properly, which is not stealing at the end. It is just sourcing your ideas. It is just finding inspiration. If you are going to copy five different people, then it's called inspiration. If you are copying a one single person, then it's called stealing. So you need to keep that in mind. You need to steal from multiple places. Make your own library of. Uh, snippet screenshot and stuff and this is how you source your front end creativity and uh, build a lot of cool ui's the only point you have to remember is uh, that whenever you are building something you need to keep in mind that for who you are building it like who will be the final audience who will be the major portion of your app and what kind of thing or text you want to have because if that is in your mind then you will easily get your designs uh, better for example if you are working with an us based client then uh, you need to know one thing that us based client like minimalist design and when there is an indian client they usually like either almost plain html design or there will be more cluttered design you have ever seen in your life or information packed design i would like to say 
not all but most of them so you need to think uh, you need to go through these research and stuff and you will eventually figure out what kind of design work for who's and what kind of audience like what kind of things so you need to go through these basic principle of buyer framing hierarchy spacing typography colors and if you're done with them then you should next focus on uh, gradient shadows insets inside gradients and animations then icons and yeah these are the all advanced stuff you should be going for so that is all for today's video and i hope to see you in the next video bye bye